Hello there, my beautiful, lovely internet friends. I'd like to introduce you to the weakness of my little nubbin here after surgery, but we are getting so much better. Ah, baby. Here we have Sophie, the self-appointed protector of the nubbin, and Leo, who is sleeping with his head off of the bed. That can't be good for you, buddy. A few days ago, I posted a surgery update video. I was looking pretty rough, and I am so happy to report that, dear Lord, a week makes all of the difference. And I am feeling really good. If you're curious what I'm talking about with surgery, I'll post the two videos down below about what actually needed to be done and why. But the reason I am making this video today is for all of you nerds out there, yeah. I see you. Who are fascinated by medical things. Specifically by medical bullshit and things that go wrong. Really, really large warning. If you are someone who does not do well with anything that might make you squeamish, I would highly recommend not watching this video. I'm gonna include pictures of everything that occurred with a extraordinarily bad allergic reaction on most of the lower part of my leg after surgery because it's like absolutely awful and also really fascinating to me because that's just sort of how my brain works, but it's not gonna be for everyone. And I will say that as someone who is not squeamish really at all, maybe it's the fact that like it was on my own skin, but I was, I was even like, don't look at this, don't look at this. I was aware of the fact that I had an allergy to something called chlorhexidine in surgery. Or so I thought, because the last time that I had a major surgery when they revised my leg, I had what I thought at the time was a really bad reaction. I did a video about it. I'll link that down below. This is some of what it looked like. In my mind, that was like a zombie leg, right? Ew, gross. Oh, Joe of the past, you knew so little. It can get so much cooler looking and way more painful. Turns out what I actually have a severe allergy to is something called mastazole. Yo, you can't. You can't stand there. Come here. Lay down. Good job. So heading into this surgery, I let the doctors and nurses know chlorhexidine, can't use it on my skin, should be all good to go. What is this face? What is this face? <laughs> Coming out of this surgery and the few days following it, I have not ever experienced the kind of pain that I was in, like the amount of pain that I was in. It was real bad. I was not leaving the hospital. I really wanted to go home, but like I've had my leg literally cut off twice and this pain was worse. And the feeling that I kept coming back to was like, it literally feels like my leg is burning off. Like there was a ton of nerve pain. There was like phantom pain. There was incision pain because there were three incisions there that were pretty large, but then it like, my whole leg felt like it was burning off. I chalked this up to nerve and phantom pain when I talked to doctors and nurses about it. Understandably, they also chalked it up to, yeah, your nerves were operated on it. You know, it makes sense. It sucks that it's so bad, but let's see what we can do to get it under control. But as days went on and it was in moments pretty unbearable, I began to really wonder like, what the hell is going on? And then a serendipitous string of events occurred. Unfortunately, one of the issues was that there was a pain pump that was installed to inject medication directly into my leg underneath the splint that I had that had never been turned on. One day when my doctor was coming in to check on me, he caught it. The way that this pump in particular was activated is for this little part to be taped down to your skin so that your body heat warms it and lets it run. So my doctor cleaned that site with mastazole, taped it down, put some Saniderm over it to keep it there, and we should have been good to go. Pretty quickly, it didn't feel right. Like that area where he had slathered whatever it was, it started out by looking just like red, just irritated, a little itchy. But then it, it, it just, it kept spreading and progressing and almost looked like shingles and then got like pussy and weird and kept growing and then it felt like my skin was burning. And I thought to myself, like, what is going on with the rest of my leg? Kind of feels similar, like obviously way, way worse, but I wonder if something else is going on. When you have a splint on, you know, you, you can't move your leg, you can't touch your skin, obviously it gets itchy. And so one day something felt really itchy. And so I was kind of like sliding my finger underneath the splint to like gently itch an area. And I felt something like raised and weird. And I was able to kind of peek underneath it and saw that it looked like red and inflamed. And at that moment, I got pretty concerned because knowing the kind of allergic reaction I had had before, I was like, shit, what if something happened again? I called my nurse and she was able to kind of take a look because we couldn't really get to what was going on without taking off the splint. And she agreed that yes, it was concerning, but kind of like the floor doctor on call and the nurses said, we're not gonna touch this until tomorrow when your surgeon can actually come in and do it himself. He's very particular about dressings. We don't wanna mess with it. However, I was not in a place to wait any longer because again, knowing what kind of reaction action I had had before, I was just really worried. So I ended up calling my doctor's office. Long story short, he actually came at the end of his workday, which was very kind of him to take it off and take a look. So we took the splint off and this was the first day. I really wanna stress, this was not the worst day. We got more cool pictures coming up, but it was very clear that I had an allergic 
reaction to this. From the location of it, it was like immediately clear, oh, that is like a severe mastazole allergy. It also matched what was going on with my hip. And unfortunately, like it had just been kind of like eating my skin underneath the splint for quite some time. And it's not like they could scrub it off because it would literally scrub my skin off. So all they could do was sort of like gently pat it down, apply some like salve to it and wrap it back up. Also, they didn't want to put me on any steroids or anything like that because I tend to have a like weak immune system and an increased risk of infection. Steroids can lower that even further after a major surgery. They didn't want to put me on anything. So it was kind of like a, you got to deal with it thing. So they went to change it the next day. And these are like the uh, uh, chef's kiss, someone please put me out of my misery pictures where it kind of, it kind of reached the height of, you know, spreading. Oftentimes things will look worse before they get better. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting here, but it looks atrocious. Oh God. I, I just remember this. This is one of the most gross parts. When they wrapped it back up, right? As they took the bandages off, a lot of the blisters popped and like a lot of the skin that was stuck to what was around it came off. And overnight, whatever was draining from all of this literally soaked through like layers and layers of gauze and ace bandage where it was like, like you touched it anywhere on that splint. And it was very moist, super gross. Yeah, so I spent a couple more days in the hospital and then they sent me home. These are some of the pictures of it continuing to heal. And can I just say, if anyone else has this thing, you'll get it. It took so much self-restraint not to like pick that skin off of there because if you can see it's kind of coming off and all I wanted to do was like peel all of it off because it, oh, it was gross and it felt terrible. But yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea to do because then it would literally be opening my skin up and be an open wound and even increased risk of infection, which is no fun. It's just not a good time. At, at this point, there wasn't like a ton of pain from the allergic reaction anymore, at least that I could tell. So itchy. Benadryl didn't do anything. Not just digging my fingers into my leg to stop the itching it was something I'm very proud of myself not for doing. Now from the time of surgery, I wasn't uh, allowed to like actually have my splint off off or get it wet or anything like that. But when that day came, you best believe that I got everything off my skin that I could and it still looked looked atrocious. Um, like this is one of the photos from after like rinsing off. You can tell that it's just so angry looking, but being able to actually wash it off helped so much. I definitely started feeling and looking better. I kind of feel like my, my skin molted a couple times. I don't think skin really does that on humans, but it's like it regenerated a number of times and like had another layer peel off and then another layer peel off. And I was a little bit concerned that it would like permanently scar or permanently have this discoloration. If it did, not the end of the world, right? But I will say, check it out guys. Look, look at this. Almost indiscernible where the reaction was. There are some little scars from where I maybe picked at things after I got it off. I actually don't think they're scars. I think it's just still healing. So with, with my experience with this allergic reaction, whenever I introduce myself to a new person, I think I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm Joe. I have a mastazole allergy. Please don't, please don't bring it near me. Just random people on the street, just in case. Now with that other reaction that I had years ago, I am curious if that actually was to mastazole and not chlorhexidine. They didn't realize that or I didn't realize that that not sure in any case, we know now. So if you've made it this far, you're probably a fellow medical nerd like I am and just fascinated by this stuff. But I wanted to make this a totally separate video because I didn't want to include anything that someone might not want to see in like the main surgery update video. Thank you for making it to the end of this video to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. I couldn't do this without you guys. To you watching this video right now, Thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. Could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else and you chose to hang out with me and Leo and Sophie for a little while and hear my story, hear my tale. And I really appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye guys.